Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here live at Pax Eight Beyond. We are starting day two of the great event here at the Gaylord Rockies Resort. And I'm here on Radio Row. I've got the MSP plug folks over there. I've got the CanIT folks over there. Everything MSP down their way. It's a busy place here. So uh, we are kicking off. I had to move some stuff around, but sitting next to me just happened to be one of the veteran uh, conference goers of the industry, Josh Liverman. Josh, how are you? I'm doing fine, Mark. All right. So. Didn't expect to be on show, but you dressed up for the party. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I got a jacket I carry around. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Josh, let's just talk about conferences in general. I mean, you are you're a traveled veteran. Uh, you go to both uh, big and small conferences. You were here last year. Uh, what's your thoughts so far for this year? Well, yeah, it's it went from being a surprisingly large conference to one that grew amazingly well. So far, it's great. The logistics are amazing. Some people know that I used to work in the shows, or sometimes do work in the shows as a photographer. I get a little bit of an insider's view, and so far this is smooth, almost flawless, which if you had any idea of the number of moving parts and the people that work 12 and 16 hour days on the edge to make these work, this is amazing. It is a logistical nightmare from my perspective, because, I mean, just looking at you know, the media portion alone, you're talking about attendees, conference rooms, I mean, food, <laughs> of all things. Uh, yeah. It's a lot to move through, almost like a Disney-like uh, performance here. But let's talk about a you know, content, perception, value perspective um, as an MSP. Uh, what do you look for when you come to conferences, and is this meeting your uh, expectations? So I'm always looking to see if there's a vendor, a technology, or a process that I know nothing about. And that still happens, and some of the shows are better than others. The bigger shows, of course, have a lot more vendors. If you follow some of the shows around the country or you know, speak or interoperate with them, you get kind of set in your ways, you know, you learn a certain set of vendors. But when you break out and get into a show this big or a different show in a different community where there are different vendors, there's still amazingly amazing things that are brand new. And then you walk down an aisle and three out of six booths are zero trust or sassy vendors. There's also that, and right. you know, that everything comes and goes in waves in the industry. This uh, is a really diverse show floor and a really diverse range of sponsors. So, so far it's been really good. And I have a couple hours from now an opportunity to maybe spend two hours spread across a half a dozen vendors that I don't really know. So it's great. Yeah. But the truth is, the the best thing about the shows is networking with peers, sharing ideas and information, obviously some time at a bar here and there. That's that kind of collegial community is hands down the best thing. Right. So you mentioned the vendors. This is one of those where there are tons of vendors here. I think there's over 130. Yeah. yeah. So there's got to be some that you haven't heard of before. Yeah, I counted, so last night I counted 15, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that number is about as high as an event. I, I had a couple other this year where I met 10 or, or saw 10 or 15 others that I didn't know. What's even more interesting is when there's a vendor in a, in a niche that I had never considered, I had no idea that, for example, you could tie all your inputs together, whether it's uh, Teams or texting, or Slack or Messenger and push that directly into a ticketing system. So that was something I learned earlier this year. I had absolutely no idea that we needed a vendor to manage all of the revenue, all of the charges and streams from all the different SaaS providers. And I don't mean a marketplace like Pax8 does, but uh, basically somebody who goes through there and reconciles billing. And I don't mean the other big names that do that already. This is yet another right. spin on yeah. that. So admittedly, we don't need every niche. And if I, to engage with every provider, with every tool, my stack would probably cost $1,500 a user a month. Right. But you do choose what, what really makes sense. And occasionally, you make changes. Right. Now, we should probably give the people an idea of you and your company. You run an MSP out of New Mexico, that's I sciences. Uh, so tell people, you know, kind of your business and how All it's right. been going. 
Well, Net Sciences is about 28 and a half years old. We're in Albuquerque, the center and the population center of New Mexico. It's kind of the largest small town in the country, about a half a million people, but it feels a lot more like a string of 30,000 person communities. It, it's really interesting, really challenging in some ways, uh, but it's also very nice and there's plenty of parking. So I, I, I really enjoy the small business, small community feel of it. And it's interesting that I don't see more New Mexicans out, I see some, but rarely, out there and doing things because I'm not a lot comes to us. If I want to be involved in the industry, I need to go somewhere else. Mm. So I, I, every now and again, run into folks that I know well and that are here from New Mexico, but it's not that common. And every now and again, I meet people that were unaware of the fact that we do and do use the U.S. dollar and speak English there. <laughs> it, Forty years ago, it was hard to cash a check with a New Mexico address. Wow, that's that's gone now, fortunately. But uh, there's still folks I meet that didn't know we were a state. Well, I, you know, used to consider anything west of the Mississippi, you know, not a part of the U.S. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, for me, I, I guess I grew up until I was 16, 17 in the Northeast. But for 40 plus years, I've lived and worked all over the West. And for me, if you can't see 100 miles and if you can't be in the sun most of the time, it's really tough. So I have to look at it differently. And right. I, honestly, I, I'm very, very glad that I adventured and found the Southwest that absolutely love the light and the people and the landscape and many, many things about where I live. All right. All right, let me ask you one last thing about conferences so I can let you get to your session here. Sure. Uh, you know, we're staples at the ASCII events, much smaller event. Sure. Uh, Channel Pros, CompTIA's can be kind of the mid-level conference, I guess, not as big as this. Um, it's interesting that I have run into just about everybody that I knew was going to be here with an event this size in a venue this big, didn't think I'd run into that many people. Have you been able to see just about everybody who yeah, was coming? Yeah, actually I have. There's people I've seen three or four times. I visit a little island off of Belize every year. It's called Key Calker. And it's a couple of thousand people. It's being developed now, but a couple of thousand people. There are no paved roads in the south part of the island. It's a, a wonderful place to kick back. But when I visit there, at this point I've been there enough times that I know a few hundred people. And I get to see everybody. It's kind of like having a, a conference, except there's no conference, in a really nice venue where there's no venue. It's just an island, and it's mostly surrounded by water. It's 50 yards from sunrise to sunset, and if you're really good at it, you can make that last all day. Yet here, obviously the opposite of that, if you just wander, you're going to run into at least you're attracted to people that are similar to you. And I tend to wander with people who wander. And yeah, we wander past each other all the time. Yep. All right. Well, Josh, it was good seeing you here. We'll see you uh, probably in what a month. Are you going to go to the? Uh, I'll be in ASCII in Chicago, Chicago, and I'll be Exchange Security after okay. that. And I, ASCII Boston. Uh, I'll be at all the ASCIs. All the ASCIs. I'm speaking. All so, right. Yeah. That's my next trip. So okay. I will see you there. Yeah. I'll let you get to it. Thank you for stopping Thank, by. Thanks, Marvin. And uh, have a good rest of your trip. All righty. Bye -bye. And uh, folks, that'll do it. And we'll be back here with more from Radio Row at Pack Safe Beyond. See ya.